Hola, bienvenidos a Spanish with Profe. Hello, welcome to Spanish with Profe. In today's lesson, we are going to learn the future perfect and the conditional perfect. En la lección de hoy, vamos a aprender sobre el futuro perfecto y el condicional perfecto. ¿Listos, chicos? ¿Ready? Vamos a comenzar. Let's begin. The future perfect and the conditional perfect. Before we begin into the future, into this lesson with the future perfect and the conditional perfect, let's do a quick overview of the simple future and the simple conditional. The future primarily refers to future actions. In Spanish, the future is formed with one verb plus the future endings. In English, the future is formed with two verbs, the helping verb will plus the given verb. For example, contestaré, I will answer. Comprenderé, I will understand. Viviré, I will live. If you notice whether they are AR endings or ER endings or IR endings, they all have the same ending in the future. According to the subject, of course. Yo, tú, él, ella, usted, nosotros, ellos, ellas, ustedes. The future expresses probability or conjecture about a present situation. In English, we use who is it? to express probability. For example, I wonder who it is. Who can it be? Who do you think it is? That conditional. In Spanish, that conditional is formed with one verb plus that conditional endings. In English, that conditional is formed with two verbs, the helping verb would plus the given verb. Buscaría, I will look for, is an example. And so is comería, I will eat. And so is describiría, I will describe. So whether the verb is in ar, er, or ir, they all have the same endings according to their subject pronoun. Yo, tú, él, ella, usted, nosotros, ellos, ellas, ustedes. More coming up. That conditional expresses courtesy with conditional or modal auxiliaries. Softening of the indicative. Can you versus could you? Must not versus should not. I want versus I would like to make something soft. To ask for something. Hypothetical situations. Implied or stated. Future of the past. Probability in the past. Perfect tenses. As a rule, perfect tenses are used to focus on the completion of an action in relation to a particular point in time, whether it is present or past. So we have perfect tenses in the present perfect indicative and they use haber, and we have past perfect indicative, and they will also use haber. And we have future perfect indicative, con conditional perfect in indicative, and then we also have the present perfect subjunctive, the past perfect subjunctive, so let's continue. It is formed by using the helping verb haber in the past participle of the given verb. Haber agrees with the subject in person and in number, but the past participle is invariable. It will always end with an O. Remember, verbs don't have gender. Muy bien. All perfect tenses in Spanish are formed with the helping verb haber and the past participle of any given regular verb. If it's ar, it's ado, and if it's ero, it's ido. For example, 
Aver plus comer. Aver is the helping verb and comer is the giving verb. So in the future is habré comido. In English will be I will have eaten. That's the future perfect. If you notice in Spanish we have one, two. The helping verb and the given verb. In English we have the helping verb as a compound will have and the given verb in the past participle. Comer in Spanish is a regular verb, while in English it is an irregular verb. Habría comido, I would have eaten. The same thing, two verbs to form the conditional perfect in Spanish versus in English, three verbs. That's the conditional perfect. Let's move on. This is an example of one irregular verb and its past participle. We have haber as the helping verb, and the given verb is decir. Decir is an irregular verb. So the helping verb plus the given verb must be conjugated in the past participle. So the helping verb is going to go in the future form or the conditional form, and the given verb in the past participle that will end with an O. Okay? So habré dicho. I will have said. Habría dicho. I would have said. Conditional perfect. Muy bien. So keep in mind, in Spanish, two verbs make the compound. In English, three verbs make the perfect tense. In the past participle, there are some irregular verbs that you will need to memorize. Abrir, abierto, cubrir, cubierto, decir, dicho, describir, descrito, descubrir, descubierto, escribir, escrito, hacer, hecho, morir, muerto, poner, puesto, resolver, resuelto, romper, roto, ver, visto y volver, vuelto. The following are some spelling changes you'll have to keep in mind when forming the past participle. The past participle of ed and ir verbs whose stem end in a, e, or o carry a written tilde on the i. For example, caer es caído, creer es creído, leer es leído, oír es oído, Reír es reído, sonreír es sonreído, traer es traído. You must pronounce the I. Caído, creído, leído, oído, reído, sonreído, traído. Because they have a tilde, and that makes it a strong sound. Excelente. And these are all hiatos. They are, the vowels are in different syllables. Okay, pues muy bien. The future perfect in Spanish expresses what will have been completed at a point in time in the future. In Spanish, we only use two verbs to form this perfect tense, while in English, you use three verbs. For example, habré estudiado, habré, Habré estudio, habré is the helping verb that in English will be I will have. Estudiado is the given verb in the past participle, while in English is study right here. We also use haber as a helping verb instead of the verb, instead of to have like you will do in English. Similar to English, they both use the past participle. Just like in English, there are regular verbs in the past participle as well as irregular verbs. What is the future perfect? This form is used to express a future event that will have been completed by a specific time or another time in the future. For example, habremos comido para las 7 de la noche. We will have eaten by 7 p.m. The future perfect can be used to express probability for actions that were probably completed in the past. For example, 
¿A dónde crees que fue Alberto? Where do you think Alberto went? If you notice, is crees is in the present, but fue is in the pretérito. The answer is, no lo sé. Habrá salido con su novia. I do not know. I guess he went out with his girlfriend. The future perfect, remember, is formed by having haber as the helping verb plus ar as ado if it's a regular verb, haber plus er and ir if it's an ido if it's a regular verb, and that it equals to I will have, and in English plus the given verb in the past participle. So ado and ido is the past participle. So haber plus verbo participio pasado is equal to to have plus the verb in the past participle. These are the conjugations of the future perfect. Yo habré, tú habrás, él habrá, ella habrá, usted habrá. Nosotros habremos, o nosotras, if it's just a group of women, nosotras habremos, ellos habrán, ellas habrán, ustedes habrán, and that is equal to, if you notice in Spanish we have just one verb, as a helping verb in English, you have two. Will have. I will have, you will have, etc. Okay, continue. Haber plus ar, and ado, or er and ir. And I'm going to give you examples using one ar verb, one er verb, and one ir verb, okay, in the future. So haber plus dibujar is equal to to have plus to draw. Yo habré dibujado. I will have. You can see it right there. Tú habrás dibujado. Él habrá dibujado. Ella habrá dibujado. Usted habrá dibujado. Nosotros habremos dibujado. O, oh, just women, nosotras habremos dibujado. Ellos habrán dibujado. Ellas habrán dibujado. So in Spanish, if you notice, our compound or perfect tense is made with two verbs, while in English we have three. The helping verb will have plus the given verb in the past participle. Now we're going to move on to aprender. So that is the verb to learn. Yo habré aprendido. Tú habrás aprendido so habrás is equal to will have and aprendido is the past participle of the verb to learn and it's right here excelente ella habrá aprendido usted habrá aprendido él habrá aprendido nosotros habremos aprendido o nosotras habremos aprendido. Keep in mind that yo, tú, él, ella, usted, and ellos, ellas, ustedes have a tilde, but not nosotros. Keep that in mind. Also notice that the yo form ends with an e, and so is the plural form in the nosotros form. All the other ones end with an a, with a tilde. So, okay, so ustedes habrán aprendido. Let's move on. Haber plus recibir, to receive. Yo habré recibido. Tú habrás recibido. Él habrá recibido. Ella habrá recibido. Nosotros habremos recibido. Ellos habrán recibido. Ellas habrán recibido, ustedes habrán recibido. So remember, in the future perfect in Spanish, we use the helping verb haber, and that one changes according to the person doing the action, but the past participle always stays the same. Recibido, recibido, recibido. Okay, pues muy bien. Haber plus escribir. And this is an example of one irregular verb. What escribir means to write, but in Spanish, just like in English, it is an irregular verb in the past participle. So, yo habré escrito, tú habrás escrito, él habrá escrito, 
ella habrá escrito, usted habrá escrito, nosotros habremos escrito, nosotras habremos escrito, ellos habrán escrito, ellas habrán escrito, ustedes habrán escrito. So remember, we use the helping verb haber, and haber is the one that is changing, is telling you who's doing the action. But uh, when it comes to uh, the past participle, that always stays the same. You notice? Escrito, 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 escrito. Pero yo habré, tú habrás, él habrá, nosotras habremos, ustedes habrán. Excelente. Habrán. And in English, you see, I will have written, and so on and so forth. Ejemplo, no sé qué habré hecho para recibir tantos regalos. I'm not sure what I must have done to receive so many gifts. So in here we're using the future. And I'm showing surprise. I don't know what I have done. That they're giving me gifts. <laughs> I got a lot of gifts. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm a good person. <laughs> Muy bien. The conditional perfect in Spanish expresses an action in the past that will have happened but didn't do to some other event. This is one of the things that uh, when I talk to students, I always have to explain. Because in English, we will say, oh, when I was 10, I will always go and visit my grandma. But in Spanish, since the action took place, I will always use the imperfect. Cuando tenía 10 años, 10 años siempre iba a visitar a mi abuela. Because the action occurred. So if it happened, you use the imperfect. You wouldn't use the conditional in there because that condition is for, for a probability, something that might happen, something that was going to happen, but maybe it didn't happen. So one of those big differences between English and Spanish. So your brain has to work differently. Pero muy bien, sigamos. In Spanish, we only use two verbs to form this perfect tense, while in English, you use three verbs. Habría viajado a China. I would have traveled to China. So, habría, in English will be, would have, and the given verb is viajar, which means to travel. If you notice, viajado, that's the past participle. In English, that is just a regular verb too, travel. In English, our uh, the past participle is formed by adding ed at the end of the regular verb. Mm -hmm. But we also have some irregular verbs. Muy bien. We also use haber as a helping verb instead of to have. Okay? Similar to English, they both use the past participle. Just like in English, there are regular verbs in the past participle as well as irregular. So, viajado, travel. That's just a regular verb. Okay? Muy bien. Excelente. What is the conditional perfect? Use this form to express a future event in relation to another event in the past. So remember that the conditional is closer to the past versus the future is closer to the present. Okay. Todos pensábamos que la inflación habría terminado para finales del 22. We were all wrong. Still going on. Anyways. Everybody thought the inflation will have ended by the end of 2022. But it's not so. It is 2023 and we still have a great inflation. Use it in probability structures referring to an action in the past prior to another one in the past. ¿Por qué crees que esa estudiante no asistía a la clase? Why do you think that student didn't come to class? No sé. Tal vez se habría cambiado a otra clase. Or maybe she moved to another city. Que se yo. I do not know. Maybe she moved to another class. Who knows? Quien sabe? The conditional perfect in Spanish can also express the probability of an action that has already been completed. And the example right here is from the previous um, ones. 
Yo había viajado por el interior de Colombia, pero no tenía más tiempo. I will have traveled to the interior of Colombia, but I didn't have any more time. So if I had time, I would have done it, but no time. No había más tiempo, no tenía más tiempo. I was pressed with time. Se me acababa el tiempo. Y posiblemente el dinero. And maybe money. I was running out of money. <laughs> Habrían sido las 10 de la noche cuando llegamos a casa. It must have been 10 o'clock when we arrived home. Conditional perfect in Spanish, remember, just like the future, is used with haber in its future form. And the given verb is a regular verb in ar is ado, if it's a regular verb in er and it is ido. And remember, those irregular ones, like ver, visto, escribir, escrito, morir, muerto, abrir, abierto. Etc. Etc. Haber is the helping verb plus the given verb must be in the participio pasado, which in English is the helping verb is to have, and the given verb is in the past participle. So in español, these are the conjugations of the conditional perfect. Yo abría, tú abrías. Él abría, ella abría, usted abría, nosotros abríamos, nosotras abríamos, ellos abrían, ellas abrían, ustedes abrían. And in English, you notice that a, abría is equal to would have. So in Spanish, one helping verb, but in English is a compound. It's would plus have, and then the given verb. Okay, muy bien, sigamos. So this is our, some examples that I have for you. This is using a uh, AR verb and the verb is explicar, which in English is explain. This is a cognate. So this is a true cognate of English. And just like in English, explicar is also regular in Spanish, just like in English. Yo habría explicado, tú habrías explicado, él habría explicado, ella habría explicado, usted habría explicado. Nosotros habríamos explicado, nosotras habríamos explicado. Remember that in Spanish, um, nosotros can mean 99 women plus one man becomes nosotros. O nosotros is 50-50, 50 women, 50 men. But if it's just all women, girls, will be nosotras. Ok, pero muy bien. Ellos habrían explicado, ellas habrían explicado, ustedes habrían explicado. So remember, habría, helping verb in English will be would have. And the given verb explicado is the past participle. And right here is also the past participle. So if you notice, Remember that haber is the one that is, uh, is changing, is showing you who's doing the action. Yo abría, tú abrías, él abría, nosotros abríamos, ellos abrían. Well, in English, if you notice, the only thing that is changing is I, you, he, she, usted, we, they, you all, because everything else just stays the same. Would have explained, will have explained, will have explained, will have explained. But in Spanish, Remember that each subject pronoun has a distinct verb conjugation. In this case, the one verb that is showing the change is haber, as the helping verb. While the given verb, explicar in this case, always going to stay with an O. Okay, pues, muy bien, gracias. And now we go with correr. This is an ER ending. Remember, all you are you doing is just dropping, if it's regular verb, just drop the R, R, and R, just put the given ending, okay? Yo habría corrido, tú habrías corrido, él habría corrido, ella habría corrido, usted habría corrido. I hope that you remember that usted is the formal form of you en español, ok, but it uses the third person conjugation, ok, muy bien, nosotros habríamos corrido, nosotras habríamos corrido, ellos habrían corrido, ellas habrían corrido, ustedes habrían corrido, so remember, habría 
is the helping verb, but in English that is two verbs. The given verb is corrido. And aquí está. It looks just like the present, pero muy bien. Excelente. So, no se les olvide. En español, two verbs form the tenses, the perfect tenses, while in English, three verbs. Okay, pues muy bien. Now we're going to have compartir. This is an IR ending verb. So remember, these are all regular verbs. So all you do in Spanish, just drop here. And in English, remember, if it's a regular verb, you just add ED. But in here, since this already has an E, you just add a D. Okay, pues muy bien. Yo habría compartido, tú habrías compartido, él habría compartido, ella habría compartido, usted habría compartido. Sharing is caring, like Winnie the Pooh says. Nosotros habríamos compartido. Nosotras habríamos compartido. Ellos habrían compartido. Ellas habrían compartido. Ustedes habrían compartido. So keep that in mind. So ustedes, that's you all. And for you all, we use that. Third person uh, conjugation, remember that in Latino America, we do not use vosotros, but if you go to Spain, you will use it. And there is a distinct form for vosotros. But in Latino America, ustedes is our vosotros, okay? So, and remember, habrían compartido, would have compartido, okay? Excelente. A ver. Plus volver. Volver is an irregular verb. So, yo habría vuelto, tú habrías vuelto, él habría vuelto, usted habría vuelto, ella habría vuelto, nosotros habríamos vuelto, nosotras habríamos vuelto, ellos habrían vuelto, ellas habrían vuelto, ustedes habrían vuelto. So, once again, ustedes... You all, that is, are vosotros in Latin America. The helping verb, habrían, in English will be, would have, and the given verb, return. Okay, muy bien. Un ejemplo. No me preguntaron por mi identificación. Yo habría podido ser cualquier persona. So, no me preguntaron. If you notice, preguntaron is in the pretérito. Therefore, I answer in habría. That is the conditional perfect. Habría. So, past tense, conditional. Yo podría. Yo podría. Po habría podido ser cualquier persona. Perdón. Contesta las siguientes preguntas en oraciones completas. Debes utilizar los tiempos perfectos según el contexto. ¿Qué habrás hecho dentro de 10 años? ¿Qué habrás hecho dentro de 10 años? ¿Qué habrías hecho si hubieras ganado la lotería? ¿Qué habrías hecho si hubieras ganado la lotería? ¿Habrás leído un libro al mes al final de 2023? ¿Habrías vendido los derechos a tu obra maestra por medio millón de dólares? ¿Habrías vendido los derechos a tu obra maestra por medio millón de dólares? ¿Habrás escrito una colección de cuentos dentro de cinco años? ¿Habrás escrito una colección de cuentos dentro de cinco años? ¿Habrías trabajado por una compañía multinacional si te hubieran contratado? ¿Habrías trabajado por una compañía multinacional si te hubieran contratado? The future perfect equals to certain outcome. You're positive about that. The conditional perfect is doubtful outcome. You're not sure about what will happen. The future perfect points to an action that most certainly will be completed in the future, while the conditional perfect carries doubt about the outcome of the action. Muchas gracias por ver este video. If you like what you see, please like. 
share and subscribe. Hasta pronto. Chao. Smash the like button.